3D printing friends. You know, recently I printed a real live rich wrap master spool, but I had more G code than I had filament, and when the printer got done, the top part of the print was missing. I'll tell you more about that and what I'm going to do to try to fix it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BD3D. Hi, welcome back. I want to give a shout out to all you wonderful people who subscribe to my channel. I am the wings above your wind. Uh, no, you are the wind beneath my wings. It's something like that, right? Anyway, what I'm getting at is I really appreciate you, okay? I do. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. All you got to do is click the subscribe button down there, and you can also click the little bell to get notified when I release new stuff. So as I was saying, I printed a Rich Wrap Master Spool, and that's one of those filament spools that's designed to hold filament refills. The idea behind it is, if filament manufacturers would adopt a standard coil size, you could print spools as needed and order filament refills as coils tightly zip-tied together. Then you unscrew the two halves of the master spool, load the filament onto it, and screw it back together. I had printed one previously and I liked it so well that I wanted to print another one, in part to use up some old gray filament that I had laying around for over a year. Now the part that I was printing was the A part of the master spool, and that's the larger of the two pieces, and it takes longer to print like a really long time. I forget how long it took, but I want to say it was in the 12 hour range, maybe longer. Anyway, master spool parts are definitely the kind of thing that you let print overnight. Assuming your printer has thermal runaway protection enabled, of course. Unfortunately, I misjudged the amount of filament that I was going to need, so when I got up the next morning, the printer was done, but the print wasn't. It was missing the last few millimeters of itself. Well, I thought it was complete enough that it would still be usable. I had a filament sample from one of my Alien 3D UFO mystery boxes that I wanted to try, so I loaded that sample onto it. But partway through the print, the filament snagged in the gap where I was missing part of the spool, and the temperature tower that I was printing suffered the same fate as the master spool. And much like me before I've had my morning coffee, it just wasn't all there. So I knew I needed to do something to salvage this master spool because I really didn't want to throw away a print that had taken hours and hours and hours and hours. Anyway. Slicer Prusa Edition to the rescue. It has a handy cut feature that lets you cut a model into multiple pieces, so maybe we can use that feature to cut away the part of the master spool that already printed, leaving just the bit that didn't. Let's try it and see. Oh, well, first we need to use some calipers and measure how much of this print actually completed. And it looks like about 47.3 millimeters, more or less. All right, so now that we know how much of it we don't need, Let's get on the computer and start up Slicer Prusa Edition. Okay, so here is Slicer Prusa Edition. Let's load the master spool A part onto the plater. There we go. Now we'll make sure that the part is selected here in this list, and then we can go click the cut icon on the toolbar. Now, although you can adjust this Z slider, I think it's a little easier and more accurate to simply type that 47.3 millimeter value into the field. And for this cut, we only want to keep the upper part, so we'll uncheck the box for keeping the lower part. Then we can click the Perform Cut button. Then through the magic of software, the lower 47.3 millimeters of the part will simply vanish, leaving the final precious few millimeters on the plater. Now we can configure our print settings. I've got some white PLA loaded on the printer. We'll print with a 0 0.2 millimeter layer height at 50 millimeters per second. And we'll use 15% infill. We don't need supports. We don't need a brim. So let's export this G-code. Then we can drop that onto Octoprint. and start it printing. All right, now we've got the remainder of the A part. It's time to make this part stick to this part. And that is a job for 3D glue. Safety first, let's take this out to the garage. 
Okay, welcome to my garage. Reasonably well ventilated environment? Check. Gloop? Check. Coarse grit sandpaper? Check. Gloves? Check. And now, let's get our gloop on. First, we're going to sand the mating surfaces of these two parts. Not a lot, we just want to rough them up a little. Then it's time to apply the gloop. What the heck? My gloop is dried out. Plan B, zap -a gap CA glue. This is not how I intended this to go. However, gotta do what I gotta do. Yep, that piece is gonna go right there like that, so. I will CA it. And we'll just put something on there to weigh it down. A granite block should do nicely. You know what? I'm going to let that sit for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to come back to it. 30 minutes later. There, all done. Now I have a complete master spool that won't suffer from filament snags. So what have we learned here today, kids? Well, we learned that when you don't have a filament runout sensor on your printer, it can't tell you when you need to run out and get more filament. We also learned that you can use Slice or Prusa Edition to reprint the part of the print that didn't print to fix your print. And we learned that when you can't use 3D Gloop to fix your oops because it dried out since you last used it a couple of weeks ago, you can always use CA Glue. I think three lessons is enough for one day. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, just so you all know, no part of this episode was sponsored by anybody. The products that I used here in the video are things that I bought and enjoy using. Now, I'm trying to figure out a way to keep you up to date on the things that I'm working on and what's going on in my world. Like, I had kind of lost my voice for a couple of weeks, and so I couldn't make any videos. Now, I know other channels have Discord servers associated with them, and that's one possibility. Another possibility would be setting up a website, and I have a few ideas for that. And there's always social media, so if you're on Twitter, you can follow me over there. My Twitter handle is in the description, so give that a click if you like. Okay then, with that, we're at the end of this episode, and I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you like the content that I'm producing, please consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee, or put a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Links for both are in the description. And now that I have a complete master spool, I think I'm going to load up another filament sample and print something cool. You do the same and I'll see you next time. Okay, whoa, stop, wait. I can't let you leave without telling you what happened after I got done making this video. Now first off, while I was editing, I realized that I sounded like a kid whose ice cream had just fallen off the cone and landed on the sidewalk when I discovered the solidified 3D glue. I was genuinely sad. So anyway, after the problem with the dried up glue, I reached out to the company via DM on Twitter to let them know what happened and to see if they had any idea what could have caused it. Well, they immediately offered to replace the product, no questions asked. They said the issue may have been caused by a faulty seal on the bottle or some dried glue preventing a good seal when the lid was on tight. Now, it seems a few other people had experienced the problem as well, and they wanted to do everything that they could to make it right. Now, one thing that I noticed the first time that I used that bottle of 3D glue is that the applicator brush was bent as if it was too long to fit in the bottle. Now the brush is part of the lid, so maybe the different bottle sizes of 3D Gloop all take the same size lid and the wrong one was used on this bottle when it has a longer brush. But back to my interaction with the 3D Gloop folks. They asked me to send them an email so they could get with their fulfillment staff about the replacement, so I did that. And the next day I was pleasantly surprised to get a shipping notice via email telling me that a new bottle of 3D Gloop was on the way. 
but even more surprising was the fact they were replacing my 75 mil bottle of 3D Gloop with a 120 mil bottle. So a big thank you to 3D Gloop for the larger replacement bottle and a big thank you to the person handling the 3D Gloop Twitter account for responding so quickly. It was late at night when I sent that DM, and I honestly didn't expect a response until the next day, but there they were, at whatever stupidly late hour it was, probably close to midnight, chatting with me and offering to replace the product. They are a top-notch company with awesome customer service. So 3D Gloop, you rock. All right, now that's really the end of the video, so now it's time to roll the thank you list of people who support this channel, and I will see you next time.